you are just going to love making this pillow. Why? Because it's fun. It's easy. It has an envelope back, not a zipper. Best of all, you can choose any fabric to make it out of. By the way, my name is Sandra and I enjoy sewing and I love having you here in my workroom with me so that I can teach you new things. So I'm going to stop the chatter and we're going to get going. Let's go over the supplies that you will need for this project. You will first need fabric of your choice, a fabric tape measure, some straight pins, a pair of scissors, a fabric marker, thread that color matches the fabric that you will be using, a measuring device. I am going to use a uh, quilter's grid a pillow form. This one here is down, but you can certainly use poly. You also need an iron and of course a sewing machine. Now to begin, you're going to want to measure your insert. Now like I've mentioned, I am using a down. I did, that's just what I prefer, but you can most certainly use a poly, uh, a form that has a poly insert. So with your uh, tape measure, you're going to go from seam to seam. And mine measures 20 inches. So this tells me that I have a 20 inch insert. Now once you have determined uh, what the size of your pillow form is, you can go ahead and cut your fabric. Now here is a formula. Uh, you will cut the width of your fabric two times the width of your Form. Now my form was 20 inches, so it's going to be 40 inches, and then you're going to add 5 inches to that. So I am going to cut the width of my fabric 45 inches. Again, 2 times the width of your pillow form plus 5 inches. Now the length of my fabric, I'm going to cut that the width of my pillow form. And the width of my pillow form is 20 inches, so I'm going to cut it 20 inches. So now that you have cut your fabric 45 inches by 20 inches tall, um, you can go ahead and serge along the two long edges. Now this is optional uh, for you, and if you do not have a serger, you can certainly zigzag the edges. Now doing this will just help keep your uh, fabric from fraying. Uh, and it also just makes the inside look much neater too. So now that your, your fabric is cut out and you've finished off the long edges, then you're going to go ahead and turn your fabric over and we're going to do a double half inch hem on each of the short sides. So what you can do is you can fold your fabric back and you can take your grid and you can lay it up here uh, one inch and using your fabric marker go ahead and draw a one inch line and I say this every single time that I talk about a fabric marker make sure that you test it on your fabric first so that you know that um, it will erase uh, and not leave any residue or any stain on your fabric. So now once we have our one inch marked, you can go ahead and press down the one inch mark and then just turn it back and align the raw edge along that one inch crease line. Fold it back. Now you have a half inch him along the short sides. Now I'm just going to take a couple of pins. I don't think that it will move uh, before I can get it to the machine, but you might have a fabric that will. So go ahead and give it a couple, put it in a couple of pins 
and you will do the same to the opposite side. Now with my machine threaded, I'm ready to stitch down each of those side hems. And I will do the same for the other side. Okay, now that you have your side hems in, we're going to flip the fabric over, right sides up, and we're going to want to find the center of our uh, fabric. So let's go ahead and just fold it in half. And I have two pins here, and I'm going to put a pin at the bottom. And I'm going to put a pin at the top. This just gives us a really good visual. Now you can certainly um, go ahead and mark this with um, a marker if you want to, if your fabric allows you to do that. Okay. But I think a pen works just fine. All right, now we're going to begin by folding our fabric to the back. And this is how we're going to create the envelope back. So to figure out how uh, much we're going to fold it over from our fold to our pin line, you're simply going to follow this formula. You're going to take the size of your pillow form. In my case, mine's 20. And you're going to divide that in half. And that is 10. And then you're going to minus a half of an inch. So that's going to give me 9 and a half inches. And so from my fold to my pin, I need 9 and a half inches. Okay, so I'm going to take my grid, and you can certainly use a ruler or any other kind of measuring device that works for you. And I am going to lay my grid along uh, the fabric. And I have my grid right here where my pin is and to my fold, and it's perfect. It's nine and a half. And I'm going to take it to the top of the fabric and make sure that it's nine and a half at the top. And there's my center. And I think this can come back just a wee bit. Okay, so there's my pin, and there's my nine and a half inches. Okay, so that I'm going to take and put another pin at the bottom and one at the top just to hold it. You certainly don't want to take this one off because then you're going to lose your center point. So we're going to do the same for the other side. We're just going to bring it over and try to eyeball it to begin with. Then we'll lay, lay our grid or measuring device. And there we go. We have nine and a half inches along the fold to the pin. And I'm going to bring it down to the bottom and do the same. Yep, it is perfect. Okay, so now we can go ahead and pin along the top and the bottom just like this and then we're going to take it over to the machine or I'll bring the machine over to it <laughs> and we're going to stitch a half inch seam along uh, the top and the bottom edge Now starting at the fold line, I'm going to go ahead and stitch a half inch seam allowance. I am going to go ahead and reinforce the corner. I'm also going to reinforce the area where the uh, flaps 
overlap simply because we don't want our stitches to break away uh, whenever we're inserting the form. And I will do the same for the other side. Now we can remove all of our pins and then we will turn the pillow right sides out. If you have any loose threads, you can certainly trim them away before you turn it right side out. I've got them all. Okay. You can use your finger to poke the corners out. And here's a little trick. If you want to make sure that your corners are poked out as much as you can get them, just go ahead and take a, a straight pin and poke it right down to the corner and just kind of pull those corners out. But don't break your stitching. So there you have your pill form all turned and you have your envelope back and we are ready to add the insert. So you're going to take your pillow, kind of fold it in half and open up the envelope back. And just stuff it in there. And now you see why that uh, I reinforced those edges because stuffing it, did. you want to make sure that you don't rip out the stitching. Make sure that you get your pillow right up into that those corners. Take your hand and just give it a nice good push. And there you have. There you have your nicely stuffed pillow. I certainly hope that you have enjoyed making these pillows. If you have, I hope that you will come back and join me in my workroom again another time as we begin another project together.